Here you go, boss. All right. Uh, congrats on the win. Uh, did this play out the way you thought it was going to? Could you have imagined a scenario where you would choke him out basically the same way that, that happened the first time? A little bit. You know, I, I, uh, I trained for a submission. I, we trained for a improved version of Anthony Johnson, a guy that was going to be able to go longer, harder. Uh, we thought that eventually we could break him down, but um, uh, it happened a little bit faster than uh, I anticipated. So did you see an improved version of him then, or did you see a version that, that was a, a lesser version than you saw the first time? I don't know, it was a different fight. It was a completely different fight because the first time I was actually engaging in the wrestling, whereas this time he was the one kind of wrestling me, which was a big surprise. Um, so even in the first round, you know, we would have preferred not to take the head kick, but if you got a guy that's as big and explosive as Anthony, and he is going to engage you on your terms, you kind of concede one round and hope that it's like a boxer with body punches. You know, you're just investing in the later rounds. So he conceded the first round. And in the second round, when he did the same thing, I could feel he wasn't as strong. And uh, eventually, I felt I was going to get him. This fight was a little bit different for you, I'm going to imagine, because of the, the, the drama with the weight cut and then the drama with, with John Jones and all the, the stuff that was going on. With that, uh, how did you kind of work through that, uh, especially today, leading up to the fight? Just trying to be professional. You know, I mean, this is what I do for a living. You know, I try to, I got to eliminate those distractions. You know, I mean, something happens in the moment, it happens in the moment. You know, I, I didn't necessarily want to see Jones before the fight. I had kind of put it in my mind that I was going to try not to see him. But um, when I go to hug Luke, he was sitting right next to him. So I ended up seeing him, which was kind of odd. But none of this stuff affects me, man. When I'm in the octagon, I have to pay attention to what's going on in front of me. And that was Anthony Johnson. We have seen time and time again what happens to you when you make a mistake against Anthony. And I just did not make that one costly mistake. The head kick hurt. But um, I didn't make the ultimate mistake to get the fight finished. Uh, Daniel back here. Uh, I know you're not in the mood necessarily to talk about John Jones right now. Uh, so who's next on your radar, Jimmy Manoa? Or do you have somebody else in mind? You know, the thing about the whole Jones thing is I'd always fight John Jones. I've always said that. You know, I don't know where it ever got twisted. or I've always been, I've been here this whole time. I've been here. John Jones is the one that hasn't been here, forced to fight again. When, we, when I lost him in January in 2015, I knew we'd fight again. I knew that this was just the beginning of a series of fights that him and I would have. Uh, I said it in the buildup. I go, this is just number one. We will have multiple fights, but we just haven't been able to come together. So, of course, I'd fight John Jones. But uh, Jimmy Manoa, you know, said that he, would pref he wants a title fight. He's, he's, he's won a couple fights in a row and look impressive. Um, I think he's a good fighter. But... Uh, Kind of, that kind of depends on what he, what they do with Jones. You know, if Jones wants to fight somebody first, and I guess that's what they're going to do. But if he's ready to come and fight me, then we would fight. Hey, Dan, Thank you. Uh, just update on your nose. Do you know if it's broken for sure? How are you feeling right now? It's twisted. <laughs> it's damn sure twisted. I don't know if it's broken. I have to go get a, uh, see a doctor early in the week, but I don't know. You know, he kicked me square on the face with his shin, and I was dipping into it. You know, I didn't catch his foot. I caught his shin. So um, I've, always, I've always thought about, like, man, if somebody knocks me out, it would be like a shin to the face because I know when I get punched, it doesn't really hurt all that bad. And I guess I figured out tonight that even a shin to the face ain't going to knock me out. I'm going to keep on pressing forward. My nose will hurt for a couple of weeks, but it, it, it's okay. Yeah, and um, it seems like between John and Jimmy, you're going to have, you know, some fights lined up for a while. But with Anthony's retirement, uh, you know, it's a top three guy in the division gone. And a lot of people think this division is, you know, pretty top heavy as it is. So as the champion, when you kind of look around losing a guy like that in this weight class, what do you kind of think about that? It sucks. You know, it, it really does suck. You know, uh, I don't feel like he should walk away. I don't know what he has going on personally. Uh, he said he has something outside of fighting that he needs to deal with and uh as a person that knows anthony not only in the fight but out of the fight all you can do is try to support him you know if, if he has something bigger to do then he has something bigger to do but um 
it will hurt the weight class because he's a fun guy to watch. People enjoy watching him fight. He's always knocking people out. And uh, it, it, it sucks. But we all have journeys in life. And I guess Anthony's journey is taking him left right now when all of us are going right. Yeah, and uh, Jones' fight obviously going to happen at some point. Um, Dana was out here earlier saying that he's not prepared to put him in a main event. And I know you said you're not going to fight him unless it's a main event. So what's your take on that? That's the, I mean, I said that we do business, Jones and I, for, for all the hate, you know, when we're older, we will have made each other a lot of money. But um, if he's not ready to put him in the main event, I can understand because we have all been burned by this young man. Um, but if we are in a cool main event, it has to be to McGregor or somebody like that because otherwise, who else would be in a main event above me and John Jones. We're not going to co-main event to just anyone. It has to be like the biggest star in the sport, and that's Conor McGregor. And can you just address the towel situation from the weigh-ins once and for all? John was up here yesterday talking to us. He said it's one of the dirtiest things he's seen in all of sports. Uh, a lot of other fighters have come out and said, you know, it's an old wrestling trick, this and that. Can you just put this to rest? Uh, I made the weight, you know? That's how you put it to rest. Made the weight, fought tonight, defended my championship. I knew that the, the scale wasn't weighing the, what it weighed up, what I weighed upstairs, and I'd been checking my weight all week. If I was holding the towel, I was just trying to hide myself because when I got off the first time, my ass was showing. It's on Ariel's website. I saw it, my entire ass, moon landing. So I just wanted to cover myself. Hey, Daniel, uh, right over here. Uh, with limited options in the light heavyweight division, would you ever consider going to the heavyweight division? If you'd have asked me that when I was cutting weight, I'd have said, yes, damn sure, go up to heavyweight. But I don't know, man. I got to do better. You know, I, I, uh, I was making 205 so easy before, and I had a good nutritionist. But my guy now, Daniel Leaf, he's better. I've got the best nutritionist I've ever had in my life but I'm allowing myself to get too big in the off time. I'm enjoying those crafts tables at Fox way too much, and I'm getting too fat. I don't even fit my suits. I got Listen, if I'm in Fox and they've got two sets of suits, it's a real problem. They've got suits for me when I'm getting ready for a fight in suits when I'm just there. And even the ones that when I'm just there are starting to be a little tight, that's a real issue. So I've got to be a little more disciplined in my downtime uh, to continue fighting in this weight division. And uh, final question, you know, people with all those goods, how do you fight through that and just become <laughs> the winner that you are in the end? I love it, you know. I Initially, it, I was taken back a little bit by people booing me. But then I realized, like, anyone that knows me and anyone that has spent any time with me, they don't feel that way. They don't feel like they want to boo me. They don't feel like they want to be away from me. They enjoy the time that we spend together. And those are the people that matter. You know, so if people want to boo, it's fine. Just do, don't be, don't not care. That's all I care about. And just don't be indifferent. As long as you care, I am fine. So when they're booing in there, it's fine. It just bounces off of me. You got to enjoy it, man. I, I, I was just telling uh, a story earlier about how I was watching WWE WrestleMania last weekend. And I said, wow, it would be great if Roman Reigns pins The Undertaker. Clean. That's how the old school guys do business. And, uh... Monday night, Reigns walked out to the ring, the ring, and they booed him for 10 minutes, would not allow him to talk. But it was the most organic crowd that they've had in a really long time. He said, this is my yard, and he left. And it was perfect because they are playing the game for him. That's me. And you know what? If I'm in the octagon berating Jimmy Manoa and John Jones, it's my octagon. I'm the one in there fighting right now with that gold belt. So you're going to sit there and you're going to take it. I insist that they didn't put a microphone by either one of them. Sit there with the camera in your face and just take it. Because I'm the one that's out there leaning on the line. If they don't like it, it's fine. Uh, DC, uh, congratulations. Sorry over here. Uh, that nice gentleman took my last two questions. But uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, though, congratulations. Uh, you brought up WrestleMania. Um, actually, my question really is, though, about the respect level you had with Anthony Johnson. I mean, it was obvious. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it almost makes the fight more enjoyable that way. Mm -hmm. um, but, however, he, he's walking away, you know, really at the top of his game. I mean, he just fought for a title tonight, and he's going to walk away. Is there any situation that would, would pull you away from the sport for a bigger opportunity? Is there anything at all, you know, possibly, like you said, 
you know, main event in WrestleMania next year? <laughs> well, I mean, I love to compete. You know, I think this is what people m miss when they think about Daniel Cormier. They go, oh, this guy, like, you know, he's a TV guy and he talks a lot of trash and he messes around all the time. They, they don't really see the competitiveness that's inside of me. You know, I love this stuff, man. I've got, I've made a lot of money. I've got security financially. I've done everything I can do in this sport. The only thing I have not done is beat John Jones. Everything else I have done. I don't have to do this anymore. I do this because I love it. And I'm not going anywhere. Not yet. I love it, man. I love fighting. I love the sport. I love the UFC. I just love that feel, that competition where I, I step in the octagon and, and I look behind me and my coaches are there, and my army, you know, and they're like, you go kick his ass, you know, and I, it, it fucking gives me tingles. Like, even now, I start to get jittery because this is what I've done my whole life. I was 15 years old when I first heard a coach sit, look at me as a 15-year-old boy in Budapest, Hungary, had never been on an airplane before, went with the U.S. national team to wrestle in the world championships for 15 and 16-year-olds, and the coach said, now you go represent our country and go get a medal. And in that moment, I was hooked. I was hooked with high-level competition, and I've chased it ever since, and I'm not done with it. Congratulations again. Thank you. Hey, GC over here. Um, as far as the weight cut and everything, uh, was, do you feel like it was a tougher weight cut than some of your other fights, or was it just, you know, people kind of blowing this out of proportion? It was tougher. I'm an honest guy. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say in hindsight, oh, it wasn't that tough. It was tougher. It was much tougher because I wasn't, like I said, I was undisciplined. I didn't do things the right way. Um, yeah, it was tougher. And now that it seems like Jimmy Manuel is going to be next, just with the whole uh, Jones, you know, not being put in that situation, uh, how do you sort of see a matchup with him going now that you've had a chance to sort of think about it? Jimmy Manuel? Yeah, Jim. He's a tough guy. He punches hard, you know. I like his little thing, you know, one shot, one kill. It sounds cool. He wears sweatsuits. <laughs> you know, a guy, a guy that wears sweatsuits is pretty cool, you know, but Jimmy Mano, I can't do me anything, man. Dude's done. Like, it's like Jimmy Mano, I would be lucky to get out of 10 minutes, seven minutes. I would demoralize him. And I just got to ask this because I'm up here in Canada. Uh, in the near future, maybe Misha Serkinov uh, gets a title shot. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on him, you know, as a fighter and, you know, a potential opponent? I think he's fantastic. But, um, if I'm still fighting when Misha Serkinov is fighting for a championship, I did something truly wrong because I don't think, uh, I don't think I'm going to be around that long. He's still got a little bit of time. He's a fantastic fighter. I've talked to him on the phone before, actually, and uh, wished him luck and, and told him how impressive I believe he is. But for, for guys like Misha, guys like Corey Anderson, who, who I... I I want to, for Corey, I want to apologize to Corey because I said to Jimmy, you just beat Corey Anderson. I was not disrespecting Corey. I really like Corey Anderson. I just think he was very young. So maybe he wasn't quite ready for Jimmy Manoa. Two years from now, he beat Jimmy Manoa when he has a little more experience. But those guys are young. I don't think I'm going to be around long enough for those dudes to be fighting me for a championship. DC, congratulations, man. <clears throat> Um, is there any inclination that you could give to what you and Arthur Jones were jawing about at the uh, end yeah, of the fight? Yeah, what is he talking about? Like, what are you going to do? So I'm telling Jimmy. He's like, Jimmy's screaming at my boxing coach. He goes, you're just tall. I'm like, well, don't worry about him. You'd have to fight me. You're not fighting my boxing coach. You know, and Rosendo, he doesn't really help the situation. You know, he's like a little chihuahua. He's yapping at Jimmy and making fun of his accent. But Arthur's sitting there talking. I'm like, I don't, I don't even fight you. What are you going to do? I'm going to fight John. Shut up. It's like, shut up. Like, what are you talking about? He's sitting there, freaking two chairs. He's got two chairs to sit in one place. They gave him two chairs. Arthur Jones had two chairs. Just know that. And, um... Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they showed uh, Luke Rockhold on the big screen, and he gets booed, too. Is there any, uh... What's all with, with all the hate for AKA now? It's ridiculous. It's crazy. It's like, I'll get booed, Luke gets booed, but Kane is the only one that's been immune to it so far. Kane, at UFC 200, Kane was like, every time he would mention my name, uh, people would boo. But then he would talk, and it was like, yay, Kane. Um, I don't know. I don't know what they see. Maybe we've pulled out of some fights, you know. I mean, injuries happen. Uh, they may see us as cocky, arrogant. Um, look, when you win as much as we do, you can be arrogant. If you're the New, New England Patriots, you tell people exactly what you want to tell them. 
So hate us all you want. Make sure you tune in. You, be, coming into this fight, we talked across the street from the airport, if you remember. Rumble was there, and John Jones came up. And in that conversation, you made it pretty clear that you, it's not that you have a desire to fight him, but that you need to fight him for your own peace of mind. I think peace of mind is actually what you said, that it needs to happen. Can, now that point could be coming. Can you just explain to me why this has haunted you so? Well, look at, look at again, I said I've won the Strike Force Championship, I've won the UFC Championship, defended the UFC Championship. The only thing I have not done in this sport is beat that man. So as a competitor, if I tell you I'm a competitor, as Rumble said, I have a drive within me to be the best. I have to beat the man that beat me. On the one night that we competed, John Jones got the best of me. I'm not going to sit here and pretend he didn't. I, that's why. It's all competitive. It's not because, oh, I hate John Jones. It's because competitively, he beat me, and I need to get it back. You, have you lost sleep over that? I mean, some really competitive people, they, they're still pissed because they lost the Little League game when they were nine. I think at this point, you can't hold on to things to that level. You know, I have to move forward because if not, I would have lost to Alexander Gustafson, lost to Rumble, lost to Anderson Silva, lost to Rumble the second time. You know, like, I can't sit there and, and hold on to the emotions of John Jones when he's not there. I mean, if he was just in the weight class and we weren't fighting, then yes, it might be an issue, but he hasn't really been in the weight class. So it's hard to, uh, to, to really lose sleep over it. You mentioned, you mentioned John a couple of times and, and how much you want to get it back. Uh, and you've also said a couple of times this week, you're not going to be fighting for that much longer. You know, you, you know that the end is somewhat near. How hard will it be for you to walk away if it doesn't happen? Either you don't fight him or you don't get to beat him. At this point anymore, it doesn't. Honestly, I could be done today and I would be completely fine with everything that I've accomplished. I don't feel like I should let this young man have so much control over me and my legacy. He beat me. So what? You want to fight. I would love to fight him again and beat him. But if I did not fight him, especially for things that I cannot control, I'd be fine. I could actually walk away today and be completely proud of my career in mixed martial arts. 19-1, and one, UFC champion, Strike Force champion, King of the Cage champion, regional circuit champions, all after the age of 30. You know? I'd be fine. I've got a beautiful family. I'm getting married on May 27th. I've got two beautiful kids. I mean, I've got everything. Man, I'm a guy that had nothing. I had nothing. I'm fine. I'm good. John Jones doesn't control my future. You actually just added one more question to what I was going to ask, but uh, why getting married? I know it's been, you know, you guys have been together a long time. Been through a lot. Why now is it going to happen? It's just, you know, man, I love my fiance. We've been together for a long time. Selena and I have two beautiful children and uh, we we were looking at dates and uh, we set a date last year and it was like you know what it's time we can't keep procrastinating and playing I know we're happy but I don't want my wife to go to school anymore and if the teacher miss calls her name or something she has to feel uncomfortable she's my wife I love her and uh, she deserves to share the name of me and our children so yeah, May 27. I'm excited. Congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. Uh, the last thing I have for you is how surprised were you at his game plan? Because if you listen back uh, to the corner audio, his his team was first angry and then, uh, like, they couldn't believe it. They just stopped even yelling at him about what he was doing. So how surprised were you by what was going on? We were very surprised. I mean, we thought he was – we actually thought he was going to try to fight like he did Phil Davis, maintain distance. But at the end of the day, Anthony's a, a wrestler – you know, so when he panics and things aren't going exactly as he intended, he starts to wrestle. So when I went back to the corner, I said, Bob, did I lose that round? He goes, yes, but it does not matter. He goes, it is fine. He goes, go back out and do the same thing. He just had to disengage. He had me pushed against the side of the octagon. But um, he just stayed in there, so I just kind of uh, kept my weight on him and just kept holding on to him until eventually I knew I would get him as time went on. What do you think he's going to do? I don't know. I hope he doesn't retire, though. I really hope he does not give it up. He's got so much more to offer to the sport.
Uh, Diane, just in the front here, um, earlier on, Dane was sitting there and he said that he doesn't trust John Jones, and that's obviously why he's in the comment. Do you trust John? Do you think if they, the USC name a date, he will make it? Uh, man, I really... Like, I know I come off as this guy when I talk about him, I like, keep, like, messing with him, and I, I don't want to, but... We've been scheduled to fight four times, and twice we haven't because of issues. But when I look at him today, and I see his face and his skin, it looks clearer. So it looks as though he may be doing better. So I guess in time we'll see. But he looks as though he looks healthier. You can tell it. He's a young man. You know, he's a young man at that age should not look as though his skin is like, you know, older. And I think at times John looked like that, like he was doing way too much. Now he seems to be doing things the right way. So I guess with, with physically, he looks better. And with time, we'll see if mentally and everything else, he's more responsible. Okay. And obviously with the nose and the upcoming marriage, congratulations on that, by the way. Um, does California at the end of July suit you better? I don't know. In, in terms of a rematch, no. I don't know. You know, but that's the thing, though. It's like, it's going to be my decision. It's not going to be his d decision. I'm not going to jump at the first opportunity because now he's, a b he's available again. It's going to happen whenever I spend some time with my wife, go on our honeymoon, and uh, we decide we're ready to fight. I've got coaches, man. Bob Cook, Javier Mendez, Zendo Sanchez, Dwayne Zinkin, my manager. We make these decisions together as a team, and that's what we're going to do. It's just crazy that everybody, like, the, the night of, everybody's like, let's look to the next thing so fast, huh? I do it, too. I set up two fights in there. Manawai and Jones. <laughs> Pick on everybody. <laughs> you just sit there. You'll take it. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. Best luck on May 27th. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, just for your nose. Will you go to see a plastic surgeon or just see a doctor? Because doctor, doctor might mess it up, you know. If a doctor, if a doctor says it's broken, I'll tell him stick a couple pieces of wood in there and just straighten it up, old school. Okay. I'm an old school wrestling guy, man. Come on. All right. You think I'm gonna get plastic surgery? All right. You crazy? Good luck. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Not getting plastic surgery. I'll be walking around like Jim Carrey on uh, that one movie when he had those three black sons. You remember that movie? What was that? Me, myself, and Irene, when he's all wheezing out of his nose, get plastic surgery. Yeah, what is going on here? Hey, Daniel, uh, congrats. John said yesterday that the towel thing was the dirtiest thing he's ever seen in sports. What is your reaction to that comment? It's like you, you sit there and you, you, you take a table, right, and you put a whole bunch of uh, kitchen appliances, right? And at the end of one side, there's a pot. At the other side, there's a kettle. And that pot starts yelling, you're dirty, while you're sitting there with a steroid needle. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's my opinion on that. You sit there over there, pot, with your, uh, with your Cialis or whatever that shit's called, and you throw it at the, the, the kettle. So get over there. Sit over there, pot, in detention. Cialis boy. Just one more. Um, I think it's 18 and one now, or 19 and one. 19 and one. 19 and one, uh, undefeated as a heavyweight. One loss at light heavyweight. Almost split your career now at heavyweight and light heavyweight. Next week, Demetrius Johnson fights. Why? Don't, why don't you get enough love in the pound for pound discussion? I don't know. It's very, it's very confusing because if you look at what pound for pound truly means, it's does your skill translate weight divisions? I have shown that my, my skills can be effective at heavyweight, can be effective at 205. Uh, yeah, I should be right up there with all of them. I mean, love McGregor, love Demetrius, and I feel like being in the top three is a big honor. But uh, I feel like it should be between DJ and I because Jones not eligible. If Jones was in there, he would be up there with us too. That's why when Jones and I fight, I believe you're getting two of the best fighters in the world, pound for pound. That's it? All right, guys.